All right, guys, Wyatt here, and welcome back to week four of our Java Lab series. This week, what we're going to be doing is we're going to practice using the char at built-in method, which looks at takes a string, and we're going to look at a single character on that string. Next, well, including with that, we're going to look at strings. We're going to use a scanner to tokenize strings. And here's what we mean by that. So, you and your pirate crew are about to get caught and face some serious time. Our, the treasure you have stolen is already buried and hidden, but you know that with your memory, by the time you get out of jail, you'll have forgotten where that treasure is. Your goal is to create an encrypted message to leave with an innocent, reliable citizen, so that way when you get out of jail, you can get the message back and decrypt it. So, here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna create a new class called Cypher, and a Caesar Cypher is an encryption technique that uses a substitution in which each letter in the message to be encrypted is replaced with some letter, a fixed number of positions down the alphabet. So what that means is, for example, with the shift key of three, the message, all dogs go to heaven, would change to do the, that right there. All right? And so, essentially, so A, three letters down the alphabet, B, C is D, L, M, N, O, and so on, all right? So what we're gonna do is create a cipher method that reads in a location from the user and creates a Caesar cipher that uses char at to encrypt the message with a shift key of three. Cipher should end by printing out the encrypted message. Create a decipher that takes an encrypted message and decrypts it, outputting the result to the user. Finally, in your main, create a loop menu option that allows the user to decide if they would like to cipher, decipher, or quit. All right, so as always, we're gonna get this thing started. On my desktop, I have a folder called Lab4 already created. What we're gonna do is go Command Shift P, create Java project, do it with no build tools, create it here inside the lab, and we're gonna call it Cypher. All right, we'll get rid of this guy back here. They give us this blank Java file. This time, because we're not creating any cipher objects, we're just gonna leave it blank, and we're gonna go from there, all right? So what we need to do, like it says, we're gonna create a cipher method. Now, in the past, the methods that we were called were called on the objects themselves. So if you remember, Last week we had a garden object that we wanted to call tomatoes on that garden object. This week what we're going to be focusing on is just creating a static method that you can just call from the main. So you're not going to be calling these objects on any methods. You can just call them and run the methods as they are. And to do that you say static. So this means it's going to be a class method. The same way with the public static void main. This is a class method. You can run this method by just calling this class. All right, so public static. It's not going to return anything, so we can say void and then cipher. All right? And what do we want to do in this cipher? Well, the first thing we want to do is prompt the user to enter a message. So we'll say enter the location of the... Treasure. All right. Let's go ahead and close this down to save us some real estate. Push this guy to the side so we can hopefully see as much as possible. And let's see. All right, that's good enough. All right, so we know that they're going to be entering a message. And for them to be able to type something, as we've done before, we create a new scanner object that we call scan. And then we say new scanner system.in. All right. So we tell them to enter the location. 
Now we're gonna have a string that's gonna be set to that location. So string, um, we'll call it user location equals scan.next line. Scan.next line. And this is what's gonna be able to read in the next line from the user. All right, so read in user's info. Next, what we need to do is reason the location of the user. Use char at with the shift key of three. So we're gonna set our shift shift key. That way, if we wanna go change it later, we can. And we're gonna call it shift and we're gonna set it equal to three. All right. So what we need to do is we have the original line that we're reading in. We're gonna create a new variable, create the cipher location, right? And so what that's gonna be is a string um, and so this is what we will change our value to. All right, so we're gonna set it to blank to start. Um, and what we're also gonna need is a char, a character value that goes in and looks at each individual character. So before, you know, all dogs go to heaven, we would look at A, L, L, space, so we're gonna look, we need a blank character as well. So um, char, so this is the variable type char and we're gonna say, um, let's just say current character, all right? And we may have to initialize that one like that as well. Um, I don't think, okay. So now what we need to do is loop through the uh, the user location and get slash change each character. All right, so we're gonna go through each letter in the user location and then we're gonna change it, all right? So this is the first time we're looking at a loop and a for loop says for as long as we haven't reached the end, so starting here for n i equals zero, this is where this is what we're going to start with. While i is less than our user location dot length, so these are some built-in methods that we can use. I plus plus, so increase i one time. So what that means is this for loop is gonna run through. So if i is less than the length of the total characters, right now i is zero, and the total characters is, you know, maybe 14, you know, maybe the user entered something like uh, all dogs go to heaven, we're not sure how long that is, but if i is not that many characters, go through here, and then afterwards increment i. So, we're gonna look at that again, kinda of here in a second. So, we know i is gonna start off at zero, and then the next time it comes back through, it's gonna be one, then two, then three, and it's gonna keep going. And every time we get back through this loop, we're gonna say, is i less than our user location dot length? Well, we're gonna find out. All right, so what we wanna do now is we wanna say, we want that current character. So this is what we're gonna change our user location character to be. So our user location character, using the char at function, this is the pre-built-in function that looks at each individual character. And now this is saying which character in here do we wanna look at? We're gonna wanna look at character i, because i is gonna be the one that changes every time, right? So at first it's zero, so it's looking at the first character. 
The second time it goes through this loop, it'll be looking at the second character, the third time, the third character, and so on. All right. Now that we have it, what we want to do is we want to offset that value with our shift key. So we can do all that in one. All right. So it's not what it's going to say right here is that it doesn't like adding the numbers with a character value. But as we've seen in the past, we can cast this entire statement. So now essentially we're looking at the value of character, you know, in the ASCII chart in Java. There's something called an ASCII chart that represents every all the numbers or all the letters in the alphabet have a number associated with them. We're going to add three to each one like we talked about before. And then what we do is now that we have that current character, we're going to add it to our cipher location plus equals current char, all right? And now we have our ciphered location, our current character, and this is going to run through our entire user location, everything that the user types in, until there's nothing left. And then what it says to do last is print it out. All right. So now system dot out dot print line our cipher location. All right. So that wasn't too bad. Now let's print it and we'll see if it works. So we have the method, our static, our class method called cipher. Let's run it one time. Enter the location of the treasure. Under, under Jim Bot's boot. All right, nice, it, we didn't need this thing to pop up, but here we go. This is what our cipher location is. That's good, that looks like a cipher location, all right? So what we wanna do now is create a decipher that takes an encrypted message and outputs the result to the user. Well, so we know that to cipher it, we added three, and given that, you know, we're gonna be deciphering the same message, we can just copy this whole thing, call it decipher, enter the location of the treasure to decipher. And instead of adding our shift value here, we can subtract it. All right, um, you know, these variables in here we should change, you know, given that someone else will look at this later on, but it's just for practice purposes. So enter the location of the treasure. Um, under the lighthouse this time. It's always under somewhere, it seems. Oh, okay, so there's the ciphered message. We didn't call the decipher until just now. So let's try it one more time. Enter the location of the uh, of our treasure. Um under the basketball hoop. All right. And the location of the treasure to decipher. So we pass in that. And now we got under the basketball hoop. We can find our treasure if we go to jail. Nice. Let's try to not go to jail, but... All right, in your main, create a loop menu that allows the, uh, allows the user to decide if they would like to cipher, decipher, or quit. So another loop that we're gonna be looking at here. So now we know that we need to create a menu option. So how I'm gonna do it, one way to do it is we're gonna say, we know that we're gonna be calling it directly from our class. So we can, we'll say public static making it a class method. It's going to return an integer. So we're gonna say essentially enter one, two, or three. What do you wanna do? Cipher, decipher, or quit? So again, we'll start off with a scanner because we're gonna tell the user to type something in. All right, system.in. We should kind of be getting a little bit familiar with that now. All right, so 
Next we'll say system.out.println. We're gonna tell them enter one, two, or three, all right? So hopefully they get it right and we don't have any issues later on. And then we'll say one is to cipher. Copy paste. Two is to decipher. And then three will be to quit. All right. So now they're going to be typing a one, two, or three. We need to create an integer variable that's going to be ready to read this in. So we'll say int result equals scan dot next int. All right. So the next thing the user types in will be what is set to result. And we're going to return re result. So that way when we call result, so when we call menu in our main method, we know that it's going to give us an integer value. So we need to be ready to accept an integer value when we call this method. And what we're going to do is we're going to start and we'll say int choice equals menu. So now the now choice is an integer value that's going to be equal to menu. So when menu is called, choice will be set. And we'll say while choice is not equal to three, what do we want to do? We want to say there's something called a switch case statement. And um, the way that the syntax for this works is we say switch and then we're going to pass in a variable an integer to say of what kind you know switch is it going to be one two or three so if the case is one then what do we want to do we're going to say we know we want to run cipher all right after we run that method we have to say break then we'll say case two Similarly, we're going to say decipher after we do that break. And then we'll say case three will never be reached right here because as long as choice is not three. Right now we're saying as long as choice is not three, run through this. So if three is reached, it's just going to quit. But what we have to say is we have to give it a default setting. So if one two or three are not if something is entered that the system doesn't know what to do with what do we want it to say we'll say system that out the print line um, we'll say please enter one two or three all right well the last thing that we have to do now is we have to update our choice right so that way the user can go through it multiple times without the whole thing ending so inside of this while loop what we're gonna say is choice equals menu again we're gonna call menu on it and so choice will now be updated again and lastly what we're gonna do is after we exit this while loop that means we know we're done We'll say, um, you know, quitting, signing off. The treasure has been hidden. The treasure has been hidden. All right. Let's see how this bad boy works. Enter one, two, or three. Cipher, decipher, or quit. Well, we want to start by ciphering a message. Enter the location of the treasure. Um, in the library. Okay, that's good. So now we know what we need to decipher. We got our message here. But what does that mean? I don't know. Well, let's decipher. Enter the location of the treasure to decipher. I copied it, pasted it. It's in the library. It's in the library, all right? 
Lastly, let's see what happens when we quit. The treasure has been hidden. And we'll just look at one time before we get out of here what happens if we don't enter a value that our thing can read. If we hit four, it'll say please enter one, two, or three. And that's what we got for this week on our Java Lab series. Hope you guys learned a little bit on using the char at, going through some different types of loops, including a switch case statement, a classic for loop. I know it's kind of a lot compact into one 15, 20 minute segment, but if you go through it a couple times, um, it'll start to click. And uh, by next week, um, well, we hope to see you there. All right, like and subscribe.